stand in solidarity with the 99% in general and Occupy Bellingham movement in specific. I encourage the council and anyone else in earshot to pay a visit to the Maritime Heritage Park Encampment, also known as the SS Noisy Water. Behind me in the gallery is a gathering of others who are also here in solidarity with the global occupation movement. They're here for an evening of warmth and <coughs> democracy, but mostly warmth. <laughs> Many folks here are getting a break from the chilly maritime air of the evening. But this isn't just about physical warmth, it's also about social warmth, political warmth. The county council is one of the most intimate forms of government towards the electorate. And these folks here are, to get, are here to get a sense of how their county government works. I hope that this proves to be a positive experience for the members of council, for Occupy Bellingham, as well as all other citizens who are here or watching on BT. To those of you who don't identify with Occupy Bellingham or the 99%, I say that's all right because Occupy Bellingham identifies with you. I thank the council. James Bachman, 1401 Iris Lane, Bellingham. You guys are all our leaders. You were elected by us. We have leaders up here as well who lead in a variety of different ways, and you guys have a fantastic opportunity right now. If you look around and look at what's going on in the world, the people are rising up. We're pretty fed up with what's going on. The whole 99% movement is not going away. It's definitely not going to be something that you're, is just going to fade away. We are fed up with what's going on. But you guys can all be leaders for good. You guys can all take part in doing what you need to do to ensure that everybody has what they need. There are people suffering, dying, not getting health care access, not getting quality education, not having a roof over their heads, clean water to drink. They come down to that site every day and feed them. We house them. It's not our job. We do it. It's your job to do it. It's the city of Bellingham's job to do it. There's lots of organizations whose job it is to do it. But we're doing it as role models because we're all leaders. We all have an opportunity to make a difference in the world. We all have an opportunity to do something of value, to be heroes. Because there's not a lot of, of really powerful heroes in our lives nowadays. There's a lot of people who really are awful role models, who really we don't have anyone to really look up to. There's very few people I look to and say, yes, that's the kind of person I want to be. But you all can be those people. You can all be people who are proud of them. Like, those are our leaders, making sure that everybody has what they need all the time. So what I suggest is that you find the finest people who live in your community and bring them together to discuss the issues that we face together. Because we face a lot of issues. There are so many issues. I'm a scientist and an educator by trade. And there are so many issues that are not going addressed right now. There is Superfund sites all over our country and world full of toxins and poisons and oil tankers. We couldn't stop one oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico that was leaking. Just one of them, we could barely stop it. Imagine a huge hurricane that knocked out 10, 15 of them, because there's 10,000 plus in our, in our Gulf of Mexico right now. They're all over the world. We, we cannot deal with the problems that we face alone. We need to work together. We need to unite. We need to drop all of these Democrat, Republican, Christian, Muslim ideas and think about, as individuals, what do we face? What are our issues? Who are our best and brightest and finest people who can come together and figure out what do we do right now together and address those issues so that we can go forward as, as leaders, as heroes, as amazing, inspiring people? Every one of you can be that, that person. And seconds, all please. of us are that, those people as well. We're doing our part. So I ask you to consider what can you do to facilitate the discussions we need in our county to start solving our shared problems because that's the only way they're going to get addressed is if we bring everyone together from both sides of the argument and every other side and put forth good proposals, implement them, study how they're working, figure out the way to change them and tweak them so they meet all of our needs. That's your job. That's why we elected you. And I look forward to working with you and all of these people to figure out what, how we can bring our finest people together mm -hmm. to solve our community issues. Thank you. I want to talk maybe just about a few conflicts. You know, you guys are working overtime you know, rezoning things, and uh, it's, it seems like now you're stepping on uh, the city's toes a little bit, so they're kind of pushing back a little bit on you, and you, you know, you got an attorney, you're paying $195 a, an hour to help you with zoning laws, and uh, it, comes, it comes to mind that, uh, you know, it's like no public giveaways for private gain. Doesn't that, doesn't that ring a bell, you guys, huh? Well, let's talk about loyalty, and let's talk about ethics, and let's talk about the attorney's loyalty to her constituents, and land, you know, the, the developers and the businesses, but let's talk about counsel. You know, counsel 
it's re rezoning like it's business as usual, you know. When it comes to ethics, you know, the people have spoken. But ethically, the council hasn't heard a word they said. But let's talk about council. The council seems to have an idea that the land is just a commodity merely to be used to enrich individuals' wealth. Well, the resources are finite. And we won't be able to grab the wealth and run when the roof falls in. Therefore, and consequently, the legal contract is disagreeable with the people. And it's in conflict with the commons. Therefore, this agreement should not be entered. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for a reason that I do not understand, uh, neither the press nor the mayor of Bellingham or any other entity to my knowledge has directed the dialogue regarding the coal port in the direction that I'm going to now convey to you. Um, I think that you need to ask yourselves the following before approving this coal terminal, should you decide to do so. Do I want to be directly responsible for fostering an arms race between the U.S. and China? By approving this coal terminal, you will be sending the very ingredients to China which it needs for war. Critical to our World War II victory over Germany were coal shortages in German steel manufacturing plants. Through this energy shortfall, German productions plateaued and Allied forces prevailed. Um, today, as was done up until the starts of both world wars, the United States business interests are working to amplify our coal export um, and steel exports, uh, essentially the implements of war, uh, to emerging powers across the globe. China's military spending budget ranks second worldwide, uh, yet many of its soldiers still struggle with inadequate nutrition and supplies. Uh, a vast standing army, hungry and cold, is demanding resources to build weapons, tanks, and planes. What chemistry will occur uh, when we approve stoking their uh, furnaces with 50 million tons of coal? Uh, the Occupy movement and the 99% which it represents are sick and tired of greedy businessmen manipulating nations into warfare. Already our shipments of coal and steel to China over the last 30 years have led to the development of a Chinese navy with 235 power ships capable of exerting force in Asia. Uh, please note to yourself, uh, Boy Scouts in the back, and they will be a page for the draft. Um, there are alternatives. By fostering small businesses uh, in sectors such as renewable energy, airline, high-tech, and wood product products manufacturing here in Whatcom County, we can create an export economy that is not based on coal. Uh, we must apply a formula and some of the following. Raw materials, energy, innovation, commitment, and strategy. We need to apply this formula and start printing Made in America on our products once again. We can lead a new industrial revolution which does not cut corners, disregard the environment and worker safety, uh, but we need your leadership. Uh, the coal train is an obvious ploy uh, by the top 1% to actually and actively strip raw materials and energy from our shores, discourage innovation and creativity. It is a ploy uncommitted to America in pursuit of a hedonistic self-indulgent strategy. Um, thank you for your time. I hope that your understanding of the complexity of this issue stems beyond increased train traffic, diesel exhaust, spawning heron, or water quality. I ask you to realize that what has happened in the past, in, in the years seconds, immediately please. preceding major warfare, is repeating itself, and that your council carries considerable weight in the decision-making process. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Alice Workema, W-E-R-K-E-M-A, that's from Kroningen in the Netherlands, from Linden, Washington. 1607 C Street. A long time ago, when I was in census court classes in the 50s, I learned that the wonderful, liberal, and enlightened man who penned our Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, said, when we have grievances and the government is not responsibility, it is our privilege and our duty to step forward and to speak. During my life, I have been observing many things, and during the last 30 years, I've seen how things are not working well. I've written several letters to the Linden paper that have been very well received. One of them was, why are our children not being able to get started the way that I did back then? What has happened? The other one is, I quoted the teachers, uh, first grade teacher, Susan Stern from Wisconsin, who said she was demonstrating because one of the most important lessons in our first grade class is, is this fair or is this unfair? I have seen 
the discrepancy between the prosperity of the top 1% who has tripled their wealth and incomes in the last years while the main workers have been virtually deadlined. And when I heard of this Occupy Wall Street, I came and I've been studying because we need information. My husband and I have the past two weeks read All the Devils Are Here by Bethany McLean, which describes what all happened among the sellers, the regulators, the uh, Wall Street people that they skimmed off and kept mirror image of, of horrible mortgages that then they sold and were declared as good as AAA bonds. An amazing book. The other one I'm reading right now is uh, the uh, long of uh, the uh, big short and that one starts here with John Stark describing how here in Bellingham HFC was selling uh, homes claiming to be 7% but when they investigated it was 12%. All through there have been people skimming off and when I hear this occupation I think it is time for me as a grandparent who cares very much about the possibility of my, my grandchildren and all of our children seconds, have please. the chance to speak up tonight. Thank you. Hi, my name is T. King, K-I-N-G. I am a resident of Sumas, 408 Second Street. And I also live in Occupy Bellingham in the camp there. And I would like to thank every one of the 99% here for allowing me to fight for you because it has been the most amazing experience living with these people and coming together and sharing with the homeless and caring for the homeless and doing for community. And I invite every one of you to come down and see what solidarity looks like. I would also like to thank the Bellingham Police Department for the grace that they've offered us. And um, they've, they've just been very, very courteous. And I would like to say thank you for that. I would also like to tell you how one way that the corporations get into the government is Monsanto through the FDA. And then the FDA approves things that are, well, that's close enough to corn. And then your children and your grandchildren eat this stuff. And then they grow up. And there's no guarantee what this stuff is going to do. This is how the poison of corporation money in the government poisons everything. It gets into the system and becomes systemic. And we've got to stop that. That's what this camp is about. Everyone freezing their toes and their fingers is for the 99% here. We're doing this for you to make it a better world for your children, for your grandchildren. And I'd like to thank you for your time and for the opportunity to fight for you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rana Lurch, and that would be spelled L-O-E-R-C-H, Rana, like Donna. I'm here standing in solidarity with the 99% and Occupy Bellingham. I'm going to speak specifically tonight for the first time to the coal issue and the coal port. First of all, this county is not a business, and any of you who believe that you should be running it like a business is wrong. You are the government that runs our county, and thus you need to act in the interests of the citizens, the land, the air, and the water of this county. You have an important role to play in how you're going to proceed with that permitting process for the coal port. We will be downwinders from China. I don't know about their war making machinery, but I do know that we will be downwinders. They are building one coal fire plant a month. Um, I can only say that when public officials talk about leaving legacies to their grandchildren and to the future, you just got to look at a picture of some pictures of Detroit and Pittsburgh and a few cities back east where big industry ran some pretty mighty manufacturing plants, primarily in steel and so forth. There's nothing left. There is no legacy for the grandchildren, for the kids who live in Detroit and Pittsburgh. They are burned out, empty cities, crime ridden. This is the legacy that industry leaves to future generations. As far as jobs go, as the talk on this coal port, you, as county representatives and county council, should be looking at creating jobs. Find something to build. Look at the waterfront. Look at our organic farmers and our sustainable farming. 
support these industries that already exist in our county. Save our county. Thank you. All right. I'm one of the 99 percenters. Uh, I'm not camped out, but I go down on Fridays. And uh, there's two reasons why I'm part of the 99 percent. Uh, one is I'm happy being part of the rabble. <laughs> and the second reason is uh, upward mobility in this country is at its lowest point in the last hundred years, if not in the entire history of this country. Uh, I was looking at the agenda and I saw that earlier, uh, the consent agenda uh, you guys worked on earlier today. Um, every one of those uh, agenda items were part of our safety net. And uh, I moved here in 1970 to go to Western and uh, I stayed. <coughs> And I got a degree in history. I'm an arborist now, but I'm still uh, interested in history. And uh, the safety net was, for the most part, established after uh, the first great Republican uh, Depression. And uh, ever since then, it's been eroded, uh, especially in the last 30 years. So I hope uh, that you guys funded uh, these agenda items as well as you can, or could have, or, or will. Um, the historic perspective of young people these days is uh, lacking in my mind. Um, and for, uh, for several reasons, uh, I think people have been dumbed down especially the last 30 years, and um, part of that is because uh, civics isn't really taught to the extent that it was when I was a kid, if at all, in junior high and high school. That's uh, why I'm really glad to see the Boy Scouts here in, in back. I was a Boy Scout myself. 30 seconds, please. Seven years perfect attendance, in fact. But, um, it's not just uh, that civics isn't being taught in schools anymore, it's a conglomeration of the media and uh, we're getting very limited points of view uh, in our news. And uh, I don't know how I got off on this tangent, but uh, it's something to think about and uh, I hope to see you guys on Friday. Come on down. Thanks, John.